I just wanted to say before I get started that do this at your own risk. Not every controller is wired the same. I am going to leave links to all the parts I got, but just be careful. So I'm starting the 48 volt conversion. The controller is right here underneath this panel. You just got to remove these two screws. It'll pop right off. So I'll just remove those two screws and then you pop off the front and then it slides right off that lip. And there's the controller right there. So one thing, the controller wasn't even screwed in place. It was just kind of nestled inside that pocket. And there's the specs for it. 36 volt, 30 amp. So to get at all the harnesses to disconnect, I actually had to flip it up and get it from the bottom. All right, so I got them all disconnected. Just flip this thing up now. The controller should pull right out. There we go. So let me go get the new controller and see about fitment. So here's the new controller, 48 volt, 1000 watt, and then thumb throttle with voltage meter. Let's see how it fits in. All right, so a little bit of, to bend these tabs up and then it should slide right in. All right, so I just took it in, bent the tabs just a little bit, and fits in there pretty good. Nice and snug, that's not gonna go anywhere. Just run them all that way. So now I've removed the grip, and then the twist throttle is just a little Allen key underneath. Just gotta pull the wires up here. off. Now I'm going to try to reuse this wiring harness if I can. This one should be fine. All right, so the next thing I have to do is get these batteries out and see what kind of space I'm working with. So the original batteries that are in there were 12 volt 7 amp hour batteries. I'm going to be putting a 48 volt 20 amp hour in there. So it barely fits, but it does fit. So I'll have to mount it to here and put some padding on it, but it does fit a 20 amp hour 48 volt battery in the tray. All right, I ran ahead and brought you guys inside. So the controller came with this pinout sheet here. Let's see that. Now one thing, the battery connector, it's only a two pin, but I wanted to use the original harness, which is a three pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, unpin this and put it on that one.
we go. And then the charge port. Uh, no, it's There's the first step. So I wanted to reuse these wiring harnesses. So that way if any problems happen, I just easily just unplug this and plug in a new one. Razor. So I just got to get all these soldered up and put some heat shrink tubing on it. I'm not going to film that part because I don't have any place to mount my camera on my solder station. All right, got it all soldered and heat shrink. All right, so I had to, this is for the brake cutoff. And then I went ahead and reused the connector that was on there. And then also I added the speed switch to this as well. So I just, then another thing I did is for the power indicator, I went in and wired it in to the battery. And then the other thing I have to do is the charge port. I have to unpin and switch the pins. Oh, oh. Okay. Make sure. Now negative is going to negative, positive is going to positive. Then oh. for some reason it's not. There we go. There we go. All right. So so far, that's what I got. I need to go get some connectors for my battery. And then I can test it. All right, so I have it all wired up. Just gotta plug in the battery. When you plug it in the battery, you always wanna make sure you plug in the positive before the negative. All right, on. And it's showing 52.5 volts. All right, now it's time to get everything wired back up and all the wires ran. All right, I got the controller in, wired up, the thumb throttle installed. Let me put this plate back on and flip it over and plug in the motor and put the battery in. All right, and just for testing purposes, I went in and just zip tied with some foam between the battery and the metal. So I couldn't get the motor wires to reach, so I had to flip the controller around. 
so I had to switch the pins on the motor wire so now it's not going in reverse, so it'll go forward. So I did screen capture of my GPS on my phone. So you'll see first right now is going to be before I did the upgrade. Now here's after the upgrade in low speed. And now here's in high speed.
All right, so here it is finished. Put the new grip on. So I was able to get eight miles an hour before the upgrade. In low speed, I was able to get 11, 12, and then in high speed, 13. But overall, it has a lot more torque. And my son loves the upgrade. So I guess that's it 